They all believe that it's going to happen sometime in the future. But I believe it's clear. And Jesus talks about these birth pains, these signs before the end, or, or signs that aren't even in time signs. He says these things must happen, but the end time is the end does not yet come on some of these things. I believe that these this uh, these seals were opened back in the first century and are occurring concurrently. And again, that's based on an understanding of Revelation four and five happening in the first century, not something that happens in the future, as you as you might know. Revelation four and five, a lot of the prophecy models believe that the rapture, the future rapture, that having it happen, takes place in Revelation chapter 4. They think when John is, um, hears, hears a trumpet and is told to come up hither to be shown things that will happen hereafter, most, most models, a lot of models believe that that is the, is the future rapture, the catching up. But um, as you can read in my model, it's, I see that quite differently. So... <clears throat> well, the opening of the sixth seal, then, we're obviously not in um, the sixth seal yet. The sixth seal, will that bring this uh, global catastrophe that you're referring to in your book? Or is it the seventh seal? No, it is actually the sixth seal. Okay. It's actually the sixth seal. Um, I believe that the resurrection and rapture will coincide with a global catastrophe, and we'll talk about that as we go, um, and that... Uh, the day of the Lord's wrath will begin when that sixth seal is open. Because when the people who survive the sixth seal see what happens, they call for their rocks and mountains to fall on them, and they say, Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb and the wrath of God, for the great day of their wrath has now come, and who is able to withstand it? So what I believe that scroll contains, which has seven seals on it, I believe that that scroll contains the wrath of God. The day of the Lord's wrath is contained within that scroll. You know, the, the wrath, the day of wrath that all the Old Testament prophets way, way, way back, even before Jesus came thousands of years ago, have been writing about, have been writing about. They wrote about it quite extensively. The day of the Lord, the day of his wrath, etc. And I believe that that, 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 that is foretold and is written on the, on the scroll that has seven seals. And what is the wrath of God? Well, it's the trumpet and bold judgments later in the book of Revelation. You'll notice that after that seventh seal is open, that's when the, the trumpets and the, the bold judgments can begin to take place, right? It's only after that seventh seal is open <clears throat> that the wrath of God can take place. So yeah, I believe that the catastrophe, the global catastrophe, is going to come in the future. <clears throat> and that is going to trigger... The, uh, the end of days and the, the beginning of the wrath of God in a seven year time frame that uh, will include the day of the Lord's wrath and end with the coming of the Lord to return a second time to the earth. David, why don't you tell uh, the listeners about the trumpet symbols so that they know exactly what that is? Okay, well, I don't go into a lot of detail actually on the trumpet symbols in my books because I really try to stick to the time leading up to the resurrection and the rapture, and then, um, you know, the, a, a, a few of the events that are described immediately after that. But well, just yeah, a basic the, understanding. You know. Yeah, basic understanding of the trumpets, uh, trumpets and bowls again is that the trumpets and the bowl judgments cannot begin until the seventh seal is open. Okay, that seventh seal must be open. It's not like well, the first seal, the first trumpet, and the first bowl are all the same thing. The second seal, the second trumpet, and the second bowl are all the same. Describe, they describe the same thing. No, that's impossible because you have to have the first seven seals open before those trumpets and bowls be, begin to be unleashed. And so what happens is once that final seal is open, then you have the scroll. You can't open the scroll, right? You can't open the scroll until the seven seals are broken. So once that seven seal is broken, then you can unroll that scroll, right? Which is written on the front and on the back. And you can, and the Lord's wrath can begin to be poured out. It can begin to be seen. And so what happens is there's seven angels that are first given seven trumpets. And um, 
your readers or the, your listeners can probably read that in Revelation in detail, but it's some pretty incredible things that take place on the earth. Um, some of it is, is symbolic, I'm sure, but that's why it's really, really hard for me to understand what's going on with those trumpet symbols, but I think a lot of it can be taken literally and, and some of it has to be taken symbolically, but it seems to me that there's a, an, an opening of the spirit world <clears throat> that takes place when that last seal is open and when the wrath of the Lord takes place because there in Revelation chapter 9 there's an opening at the bottomless pit and these creatures that come out of the bottomless pit. And so, you know, again, I believe there is some symbolism but I, I also believe that literally the, the spirit world will be given greater entrance into our three-dimensional world than, than ever before and they'll be able to torment people as, just as it says in uh, Revelation chapter 9, which is the fifth trumpet. Um, and so, you know, after all of these strange things with the first with the first six trumpets take place, then there's a seventh trumpet, and that seventh trumpet allows the seven bold judgments to be poured out. And those are also some pretty incredible things that take place involving uh, sores that come on people <clears throat> that take the mark of the beast, um, earthquakes, uh, all kinds of pestilence, all kinds of strange things, and uh, finally ends with the, uh, the day of the Lord's wrath uh, coming to a completion and the return of the Lord immediately after that last bowl. So this should take place beginning at the opening of the sixth seal? Are you That's right. Okay. And at that point of the sixth seal, is that when the uh, catching up occurs? Yes, yes, that's what I believe. Okay. And, and, and for me, the key to understanding that, again, was, was when I went through Peter Good Games um, analysis, it was understanding what is the connection between what happens in the sixth seal and what we know about the rapture and the resurrection. And perhaps it would be a good time to talk about that. Yeah, what will happen when the resurrection occurs. Yeah. I know you lay it out in a, like a three-stage um, explanation in your book. Yeah. And I think that you did a very thorough job. It's excellent. So maybe you want to tell our listeners uh, about that and about yeah. what you uh, think will happen when the resurrection occurs. Right, right. Well, again, the sixth seal, it begins with a huge earthquake, and that's, that's kind of where I started my study. Now, the three-stage process that you just talked about is, first, the resurrection of the dead in Christ, the future resurrection. And this is a resurrection to an immortal body, not... Act, not a mortal body, not a resurrection such as um, Lazarus, uh, where he was dead for three to four days, and Jesus called back his spirit into his body, in his, his mortal body, and he, he lived again, only to die again later. That's not the kind of resurrection this is. This is a resurrection into an immortal body, like Jesus had when he was resurrected, never to die again, never to be able to die to, uh, you know, live forever, like, like Jesus said. At least me shall live forever. Uh, that's the first stage. The second stage is the transformation process. There's a, there's a metaschematozo is the Greek word that Paul uses. <laughs> um, it's, it's a changing of the bodily structure into the same bodily structure as Jesus' glorified body. And Philippians 3.21 is a verse to read about that. And I'm just going to read that one really quick. Where Paul says, <clears throat> Our citizenship is in heaven, and we also await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform these humble bodies of ours into the likeness of his glorious body by means of the power by which he is able to subject all things to himself. And that word there, transform, is... I believe is the Greek word metaschematizo. It's kind of a metamorphosis you know, is, is a good English word for that. So that's the second stage. And then the third stage is after there's a resurrection and after there's a transformation of their bodies and our bodies,